Laurie Vallow Daybell had her sentencing. When she was told she was allowed to speak, I was quite curious about what she was gonna say. Was she gonna say she felt bad about murdering her children? I would like to start by quoting John from the New Testament in the Bible. In John chapter eight, verse seven, Jesus says, he that is without sin among you, let him cast first cast a stone at her. So she starts off with a quote from the Bible. <laughs> Isn't this the least likely of all things that people are going to want to hear from you? You're wrong to judge me. You're just as screwed up yourselves. That's basically what she's saying. Yeah, I did this, but you shouldn't be judging me. Look at your own problems. Then in first, verse 15, Jesus says, Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true. And she's saying this really like facing a judge. So it, it makes it even more completely inappropriate. When she was diagnosed as being delusional, I don't think that this is what that psychologist or psychiatrist would have had in mind. But one of her delusions that I think is that is, you know, the most bizarre is is, is this one, that she cannot see how she's actually coming across and just how much of a hole she's digging herself into, how much worse she's making herself look. Jesus knows me and Jesus understands me. I mourn with all of you who mourn my children and Tammy. Here she is playing the victim, saying, what about me? I mourn those kids I murdered. And I mourn the wife of my new husband who I knew was gonna be murdered so that I could marry him. Again, this is gonna put her in the worst possible light and she doesn't realize that. And it's at this moment that the judge realizes she has no remorse. And this is gonna affect her sentencing. Jesus Christ knows the truth of what happened here. Jesus Christ knows that no one was murdered in this case. Accidental deaths happen. Suicides happen. Fatal side effects from medications happen. I have a different perspective in life because in 2002, when I was pregnant with Tylee, I died in the hospital. I was standing near my pregnant body watching the doctors try to revive me, which took them a few minutes. My sister Stacy was standing to my left. She said she needed to show me some things, and we went to heaven. I later returned to my body. Because of this experience, I have access to heaven and the spirit world. You suffer from, and I'll quote, delusional disorder mixed type with bizarre content and hyper-religiosity, continuous and unspecified personality disorder with histrionic and narcissistic features. I made a video in April called How Laurie Vallow Ticks. And in that I talked about the traits that look to me to be histrionic and why. So you might wanna have a look at that. I'm gonna put the link under this video. There is a form of delusional disorder that has something in common with somebody who has narcissistic personality disorder. It's called grandiose delusional disorder. And that means that you believe you're better than other people, but it's very specific. You can't just think you're better. You also have to believe that you have achieved something incredible. You might believe you've made an amazing discovery or that you are incredibly talented at something or you've been ordained by God. It has to be something, again, that nobody else or almost nobody else believes about you. Someone with erotomatic delusional disorder believes that someone famous is in love with them. They're so convinced about it that they might contact that person. Some people with that disorder will start stalking the famous person. So those kinds of delusions might feel quite um, positive to the person who's experiencing them. There are other kinds of delusional disorders that aren't a nice experience. Jealous delusional disorder is when somebody believes that their partner is cheating on them, but they don't have any evidence that that's the case. 
and they don't even have any evidence that the person would do such a thing. Persecutory delusionary disorder is when someone thinks that people are against them, that one or more people want to attack them in some way. It might be that they want to publicly shame them or that they want to hurt them physically, that they want to kill them. So this is a really negative experience of delusional disorder. And finally, you can have somatic delusional disorder, which is when you believe there's something physically wrong with you. You might believe that there are little creatures under your skin, um, you know, or that, uh, you know, you have some terrible disease and you just can't believe you don't have it, even when you see tests that show you don't have it. Mixed delusional disorder is a combination of more than one of these. And when you add in the histrionic traits, they're going to be delusions we all know about. In Laurie Vallow's case, her delusions of grandeur are religious. So you have to believe that you're better than everyone and that there's something godly about you. You know, that you're better because either you are God or you're very close with God compared to everyone else or God thinks you're better than everyone. Um, everyone else is going to hell and you're going to heaven or in Laurie Vallow's case, most people are going to be wiped out, but she and very few others are going to carry on living. She's also said that Jesus doesn't judge her. So he doesn't think killing her children or anyone else, Tammy and whoever else, was wrong. So if that's the case, she's above not only the law in her mind, but the law of God, you know, the all of the sins in the Bible. Somehow there's something about her that means she can't be held accountable for any of those things. Since then, I have had many communications from people now living in heaven, including my children, Tylee Ashland and Joshua Jackson, my sisters, Stacy and Lolly, my aunts and my uncles and my grandparents. I have had many communications with Jesus Christ, the Savior of this world, and our heavenly parents. I've had many angelic visitors have come and communicated with me and even manifested themselves to me. People who develop delusional disorder haven't always been this way. It tends to develop from the age of 40 onwards. So I think that's quite interesting when we look at how people have said that Laurie Vallow Daybell changed. The judge puts some significance on this. So obviously a very complex diagnosis that's been made here whether or not that can or how it would be treated, I think by all accounts is unknown at this time. I've reviewed your personal history, including statements from your own immediate family members, and it's clear that something radically changed in you that led you to where you are today. Uh, in a statement made in the pre-sentence investigation report, your mother stated it perhaps best and said that you are not now, quote, the person she knew. Having said that, personality disorders, there's something of them in teenagers, you know, even in children. So it's not like you grow up grounded and, and sort of like the other kids around you and then suddenly, you know, you, you become someone else in your midlife. For a long time, you were obviously a good mother, sister, daughter and friend to many people. So even though she might have seemed like this great mother, I don't believe that it's possible that she could have gone from being this really caring mother to somebody who's so self-absorbed. Before, I, I made three videos on her and I talked about whether she was delusional or whether she was a psychopath. That was the question I asked, you know. And um, I felt that both were going on, you know, that she was showing psychopathic traits she wasn't moved by, you know, the deaths of her children, that even if she was completely delusional, even if we believe 100% that she thought that her kids had been taken over by zombies, it still would have been very painful to see the body of your child dead. You know, you would think um, that when you, and I mentioned in one of those videos, that when you see one of these films about zombies taking over uh, human bodies, when they're killed, the person who knew them still feels sad, you know, they still mourn the death of that person because of who they used to be to them. Whereas Laurie Vallow Daybell was dancing around in a, on a beach 
in Hawaii, you know, having a wonderful time with her new husband who she married after the kids had been murdered. So you don't see any remorse from her. And that doesn't come just from having a delusion. Hi. How's it going? Hi. Are you Kevin Ward? Hi. Yeah. This is Ali, sir. Do you have any questions regarding that? I was a young mother and you would think I wouldn't want to leave my children. But as I stood in heaven, I did not want to go back. I thought they would be fine without me because I was peaceful and I was happy and I was home. But then I was shown how I would help my children and others in the future. So ultimately, I did agree to go back to my body. She's going on and on and on about why she's this great person. Kylie has visited me. She is happy and very busy. Kylie is free now from all the pains of her life. Kylie suffered horrible physical pain her whole life. So now she's talking about how she's done her daughter a massive favor. So she's not saying, well, I thought my daughter was a zombie. For now, she's dropped that idea and she's now talking about how she's done her daughter such a favor she's basically saved her like this fantastic beautifully kind heroine she's saved her daughter from all of her pain and uh, it is kind of a bit again delusional that she hasn't thought well how are people going to view this when i also had a son and he didn't have pancreatitis you know <laughs> Aren't people going to think, well, actually, this isn't really adding up? I protected her. I tried to protect her with my whole life. I tried to protect her. I worried about her every single day. Tylee had to get her GED because she couldn't go to school every day because she never felt good. She felt sick. Nobody knows this because Tylee, like myself, tries to put on a good front, tries to be a happy person tries to have hope in life, tries to know that she's here for a purpose and that she has an eternal purpose to be on this earth. She says her daughter couldn't even go to school because of the pain. And yet she said people didn't really know about it. But then if the pain she was in was so bad that she had to miss a lot of school, people would have been talking about it. I think we'd all know that, you know, because when people were interviewed about Tylee, they would have said, well, I barely saw her because she was always off school because she was in so much pain. You know, she had this terrible medical condition. So, it, it, you know, presumably she did have pancreatitis and she did go to hospital apparently nine times. But that doesn't mean her entire life was full of pain. And, and I don't even know why I'm talking about this. You know, I feel like I'm already buying into her, you know, all of these manipulations just by even talking about whether Tylee was in pain or not. But I never stopped worrying about her. One of the times that Tylee came to me as a spirit after she died, she said, she commanded me and she said to me, stop worrying, mom. We are fine. She knows how I worry and how I miss her. She had talked about Tylee and her son, JJ, with disgust. You know, in the text messages, you can tell she is just really irritated by them. With Tylee, she wants to know, is her child close to death? She's asking out of 10, what's the number? Because once they get to naught, it means they're just about to die. And her lover, Chad Daybell, says two out of 10. And she says, oh, really, two or three, not zero. So she's encouraging Chad Daybell to say, oh, yeah, actually zero. So she's trying to hurry this up. This is this supposed loving mother who is, is really willing her kids dead and wants it to happen as quickly as possible. About to be sentenced for murdering her children and she's talking about what a great mother she was. Who often we run away from pain. In her case, she's, she's done so well at avoiding her own pain uh, by having these delusional beliefs that she's, I would actually say, not only does she not feel pain about what she did to her children, 
but she actually doesn't feel uncomfortable about it either. The first time JJ visited me after he passed away, he put his arm around me and he said to me, you didn't do anything wrong, mom. I love you. And I know you loved me every minute of my life. Gigi, JJ, Joshua Jackson, was an adult spirit. And he was very, very tall when he put his arm around me. In order to fulfill the criteria for delusional disorder, you need to be psychotic. You need to have a belief that almost no one else in the world has. And I guess it's that that sets Laurie Vallow Daybell apart from all those other people who I consider to have delusions, <laughs> who believe something that unfortunately many other people do as well. The person or the people who you come across who are abusive, they may not have been diagnosed with, uh, you know, with a delusional disorder because they may not have found themselves in a situation where they're going to be assessed, but also because a lot of their delusions might not be considered as delusions, you know, in terms of having to meet that criteria. Just being an arrogant person is delusional because it means that you believe you have more value than other people. That's the same with entitlement. Entitled people, they, they, I think out of everyone, they make me laugh the most because, you know, they really think that, you know, that they deserve all of this stuff that they just have no right to. And they don't stop and question that. They don't question themselves. They don't understand. If they don't get it, what they think they're entitled to, then they just get really annoyed as if that's what they're supposed to be getting. <laughs> so, and I think it's important, I know I've talked about this before, but I think it's really important to be able to laugh at this kind of behaviour. And it's something that I think people can find really therapeutic if, if you can get them to laugh about the character who is trying to make their life a misery or not even trying, you know, they don't even know they're doing it because they're so self-involved and, you know, that they don't even know what's going on outside of them. Can you see how Laurie Fallow Daybell's delusions serve her? She's murdered her son, so there's a horrible risk that she's going to feel terrible about it and, like, she's a bad person. And the delusion comes to rescue her from that. And it tells her that her son is reassuring her that she is a good mother, that she hasn't done anything wrong, and he puts his arm around her. This is the same with other people who have delusions. Just because they're not as drastic, just because they're not imagining that somebody has come to visit them from another realm, the delusions still work in the same way to help them to escape pain, to be able to think of themselves in the way they want to think of themselves. Whether that's because they blame someone else for their own behaviour or because they decide somebody is a bad person and they deserved their behaviour or whatever it may be. Codependent people are just as delusional, but everything's inverted with them. So instead of being afraid of seeing in themselves that they're not a good person, they're afraid of seeing it in somebody else. They believe other people will meet their needs when those people have no interest in doing that. He is busy, he is engaged, he has jobs that he does there, and he is happy where he is. His life was short, but JJ's life was meaningful. JJ was a wonderful person and touched the lives of everyone, and I adored him every minute of his life. My eternal friend Tammy Daybell has visited me on several occasions. She came to bring me peace and comfort, and I know that she is extremely busy helping her family, especially her children and grandchildren. And I have a great love for Tammy. And she describes Tammy as a wonderful friend. She took Tammy's husband and, you know, and I'm not saying that as a, you know, as someone who says, oh, it's always the woman's fault. I'm certainly not. But she did know that Tammy was married, that they had kids and she was with Tammy's husband planning getting married to him when Tammy was still alive and totally oblivious. She had no idea her husband was having an affair or that their marriage was over. And then she knew what 
um, Chad planned to do to Tammy, that Chad planned to murder his wife. She knew that, and yet in her deluded mind, Tammy is a wonderful friend of hers who wants to come to her and offer her comfort. You know, because of course, after people die, their only thought is to be there for Laurie. <laughs> you know, even though she's murdered them. <laughs> and it reminds me of Chris Watts because he had a similar thing, you know, where he was talking about a dream he had where his little girls were, were there, they were with him. And, um, and, and, and again, you know, they, they were being close to him in his dream. They were totally fine with him. They had no issue with him. It's all about her, what a wonderful mother she was. And so this all supports the idea that she's a narcissist, that she is the only person who's really of interest to her, and that how others view her is the only thing that really matters. You know, that that's how she, that you, you know, that is so important to her, that even when she's about to be sentenced, she just wants everybody to know what a what a decent person she really is. Obviously the judge sees that she has no remorse, it's so obvious. <laughs> the judge sees that she's only interested in herself and that she's going on about what a wonderful person she is. So this is not gonna help her. And I wonder what her lawyers said to her. I wonder if they advised her not to make this speech. Who knows? She's also not trying to convert everyone. So she's not actually thinking about other people. She's not thinking, okay, I'm gonna make this speech before I go to jail and no one hears from me again. I'm gonna make this speech that's gonna help the people, you know? And then she could have said, she could have maybe talked about God and she could have said that God had helped her in her time of need and that kind of thing. And then maybe she might have inspired people onto her path, you know, and, and, and Theoretically, that in her mind, that should be a good thing for them. But she's not interested in that either. <laughs> you know, all she's interested in is explaining what a great person she is. It's such a contrast to the way people live their lives after they have had a lot of contact with someone like this. You know, because people who are abused are often completely guilt-ridden about the tiniest thing. They feel responsibility for other people's emotions. They feel a need to rescue people from their negative feelings. Um, it, so, you know, it's it's the exact opposite. And, and, and I guess it's making me smile because there's something admirable uh, in, in a kind of way um, just in terms of survival, there's something admirable about being so good at deluding yourself that you avoid such incredibly horrible feelings so entirely. <laughs> to, to be absolutely clear, I certainly don't admire Laurie Vallow Daybell. I just admire a capability because it's something that I don't relate to. It's, a, it's an ability I don't have. In the next video, I'm gonna look at how the judge responds to Laurie Vallow Daybell and what we can learn from that about how to manage people who refuse to take responsibility for themselves. So I hope that was helpful. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you then.